which uh, Martin Schulz mentioned today and underlined today. The, the, the negotiations must immediately start. We need clarity. We have to avoid any kind of uncertainty. And that means we cannot wait till the British Tory governing party is re-electing a new prime minister. So we ask for immediate start of these negotiations. As EPP group, for us is a second important point that this is mainly a British decision and this is first of all a British problem. We see today that the pound lost value and not the euro so much. That shows clearly that this is mainly a British question, a British problem which has to be answered now by the British government. A third element is for us that after the decision of the British people, there must be inside of the European Union and the institutions, among the national uh, leaders, among the member states and among the people, there must be a kind of a reflection period, what we have to do to do a better job. And one of the elements we want to do is, as EPP group, that uh, one of the questions which were raised in the debate in Great Britain was the democratic element on European level, that the people must decide in which direction this continent will go. And that means for us, having this debate in mind, that we want to strengthen the European Parliament, the parliamentarism on European level, that suspicious decisions we are doing on European level must be like, have a democratic legitimacy based in the European Parliament. So these are the mo most important things, and probably you have some questions. We will take two or three questions, but please use the microphones who are at the two sides. News. You probably have heard, I'm sure, that David Cameron has resigned. Do you accept that the European Union is partly responsible for this because the EU has failed to recognise that reform was needed in order to secure an in-vote in the UK, and also the role of immigration, that you've turned a blind eye to that and the importance of the electorate? I think it makes no sense to discuss who is now responsible. We have the will of the British people on the table, and it's now the question to implement it. And the most important thing is that we do this very quickly. That is our main message. We need to avoid a long period of uncertainty. And the European continent cannot be occupied by a Tory internal battle who will be the next uh, leader of the Tory party and the next prime minister of Great Britain. But that is what is on the table, and that is what we have to do. But if you're going to ensure that other countries don't have referendums and decide to exit as well, then you have to face up to the reality of why Britain has voted to leave the European Union. Well, there are a lot of people in Great Britain who still believe in the European Union, so it was a tight race. A lot of people are in favor of this project, and I thank them for their clear commitment. And now we have to deal with the implementation of the current situation. Can I ask? Council from Aska News, uh, you, you say it very clearly, we cannot wait for the Tories to decide for a new leader. Uh, there is this problem of the triggering of Article 50, and uh, there has been a debate in, in, in the UK about the fact of delaying the triggering in order to have more time, in order to have uh, the possibility to put more pressure on the, on the negotiations. So what you are saying is that actually there should be a, a very clear, immediate triggering of this Article 50 and how and when? I expect from the British government, from the current uh, government in office, I expect from them to do immediately the necessary legal steps, uh, especially next week when there is a council meeting. What is, what is needed when there is a decision of people on the table? So the decision of the people is on the table and we are discussing legal questions, how we should write a letter or is there a further decision necessary. Sorry, we respect the decision of the people. That means we want immediately start with negotiations and we do this in the, in the idea, in the approach to uh, say leave means leave. We said this at the beginning of the referendum campaign, we said this during the <coughs> referendum campaign and we say this now, leave means leave and again, for me, 
I see that today markets show very clearly that Great Britain has a bigger problem than the European Union. It's for both sides a damage. That is obvious. That is obvious. But it's a bigger problem for Great Britain. And we want to have, first of all, stability. That means short period of uh, uncertainty. Last question there in the left. You said that, that sorry, Kat, uh, you reporter. You said the British people had voted to, to leave. There is one group that notably didn't vote, and that's the Scottish voters. Would you welcome an independent Scotland joining the European Union? Also, Sinn Féin said they would like to see a referendum in Northern Ireland, another region that uh, has voted for Remain. Would you like to see a united Ireland be part of the EU? First of all, we have uh, an average, let me say, of the outcome from Great Britain, and that is uh, to leave the European Union. And that is, first of all, what we respect. When there are upcoming decisions on the national level, so on the Scottish level, on the North Island, Northern Ireland level, to go another way, like England and Wales, this is first up to them. But Europe is open for new member states. That's totally clear. And those who want to stay are welcomed in the European Union. But it's not our job to, to do such, such things. It's uh, the job of the Scots and the British people, generally speaking, Great Britain, to decide about their future. Again, I have to say, the bigger problem is on the island. The bigger problem is in London and is uh, 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 in Great Britain. And we have to think in the European Union about the reflection period. But first of all, we need a clear message from Great Britain. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.